a spectre is haunting Europe, the spectre of communism. All the powers of old Europe have entered into a holy alliance to exercise this spectre. Pope and Tsar, Metternich and Guzot, French radicals and German police spies. Where is the party in opposition that has not been decried as communist by its opponents in power? Where is the opposition that has not been hurled back the branding reproach of communism against the more advanced opposition parties, as well as against its reactionary adversaries? Two things result from this fact. One. Communism is already acknowledged by all European powers to be itself a power. 2. It is high time that communists should openly, in the face of the whole world, publish their views, their aims, their tendencies, and meet their nursery tale of the spectre of communism with the manifesto of the party itself. To this end, communists of various nationalities have assembled in London and sketched the following manifesto, to be published in the English, French, German, Italian, Flemish, and Danish languages. Chapter 1. The Bourgeoisie and the Politarians The history of all hitherto existing society is the history of class struggles. Freeman and slave, patrician and plebeian, lord and serf, guildmaster and journeyman, in a word, oppressor and oppressed, stood in constant opposition to one another carried on an in uninterrupted, now hidden, now open fight, a fight that each time ended, either in a revolutionary reconstru reconstitution of society at large, or in the common ruin of the contending classes. In the early epochs of history, we find almost everywhere a complicated arrangement of society in various or into various orders, a manifold gradu gradation of social rank, in ancient Rome we have patricians, knights, plebeians, slaves. In the Middle Ages, feudal lords, vassals, guildmasters, journeymen, apprentices, serfs. In almost all of these classes, again, subordinate gradations. The modern bourgeoisie society that has sprouted from the ruins of feudal society has not done away with class antagonisms, and has but established new classes, new conditions of oppression new forms of struggle in the place of old ones. Our epoch, the epoch of bourgeoisie, possesses, however, this distinct feature, it is simplified class antagonisms. Society as a whole is more and more splitting up into two great hostile camps, into two great classes directly facing each other, the bourgeoisie and the proletariat. From the serfs of the Middle Ages sprang the chartered burghers of the earliest towns. From these burgesses, the first elements of the bourgeoisie were developed. The discovery of America, the rounding of the Cape, opened up fresh ground for the rising bourgeoisie, East Indian and Chinese markets, the colonization of America, trade with the colonies, the increase in the means of exchange and, the co in, and in commodities generally, gave to commerce, to navigation, to industry, an impulse never known before, and thereby, it's a revolutionary element in the totering feudal society, a rapid development. The feudal system of industry, in which industrial production was monopolised by closed guilds, now no longer suffice for the growing wants of the new markets. The manufacturing system took its place. The guild masters were pushed on one side by the manufacturing middle class. The division of labour between the different corporate guilds vanished in the face of division of labour each single workshop. Meantime the markets kept ever growing, the demand ever rising, even manufacturer no longer sufficed. Thereupon, steam and machinery revolutionized industrial production. The place of manufacture was taken by the giant, modern industry. The place of the industrial middle class by industrial min millionaires, the leaders of the whole industrial armies, the modern bourgeoisie. Modern industry has established the world market, which has dis for which the discovery of America paved the way. This market has given an immense development to commerce, to navigation, to communication by land. This development has, in its turn, reacted on the extension of industry, and in proportion as industry, commerce, navigation, railways extended. In the same proportion, the bourgeoisie developed, increased capital, and pushed into the background every class handed down from the Middle Ages. We see, therefore, 
how the modern bourgeoisie is itself the produ product of a long course of development of a series of revolutions in the modes of production and of exchange. Each step in the development of the bourgeoisie was accompanied by a corresponding political advance of that class, an oppressed class under the sway of feudal nobility, an armed and self-governing association in the medieval commune. Here, independent urban republic, as in Italy and Germany, their taxable third estate of the monarchy, as in France. Afterwards, in the period of manufacturing proper, serving either the semi-feudal or the absolute monarchy as a counterpoise against the nobility and, in fact, a cornerstone of the great monarchies in general. The bourgeoisie has at last, since the establishment of modern industry and of the world market, conquered for itself. In the modern representation, representative state, exclusive political sway, the executive of the modern state is but a committee for managing the economy affairs of the whole bourgeoisie. The bourgeoisie, historically, has played a most revolutionary part. The bourgeoisie, wherever it has, wherever it has got the upper hand, has put an end to all feudal, patriarchal, idyllic relations. It has pitilessly torn asunder the motley feudal ties that bound man to his natural superiors, and has left remaining no other nexus between man and man than naked self-interest and callous cash payment. It has drowned the most heavily statics of religious fervor of chivalrous enthusiasm, of philistine sentimentalism in the icy water of egotistical calculation. It has resolved personal worth into exchange value, and in place of the num numberless indefeasible chartered freedoms, has set up that single, in inconsciously, I can't, unconsciously, <laughs> unconscious bill, freedom. Free trade, in one word, for exploitation, Veiled by religious and political illusions, it has substituted naked, shameless, direct, brutal exploitation. The bourgeoisie has stripped of its halo every occupation, hitherto honoured and looked, looked up to with reverent awe. It has converted the physician, the lawyer, the priest, the poet, the man of science into its paid wage labours. The bourgeoisie has torn away from the family's sentimental veil and has reduced the family relation to a mere money relation. The bourgeoisie has disclosed how it came to pass that the brutal display of vigour in the Middle Ages, which reactionaries so much admire, found its fitting complement in the most slothful indolence. It has been the first to show what man's activity can bring about. It has accomplished wonders far surpassing the Egyptian pyramids, Roman ac aqueducts and Gothic cathedrals. Is con conduct ex expeditions that's put in the shade all former exoduses of nations and crusades. 